Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, we present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold! Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. Bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. Charlie Breen woke from a troubled sleep. A lantern was shining in his eyes. He sat up in his cot, and then, beyond the light of the lantern, he saw the faces of three men. He recognized only one of them. Mac, what's the idea? I want you to meet some friends of mine. Jake Larson and Curly Mass. Jake Larson? Take it easy, mister. What, what's the idea of bringing these poor cats here, Mac? I told you they're friends of mine. What's the idea? You remember the other day when you feel so bad and I got your supper for you? Yeah. I was out in the kitchen when the doc came. Well? The doc wrote a letter for you, Charlie, to the Northwest Mounted Police. You heard it? Sure. I talked it over with Jake and Curly. We decided you were making a big mistake. Well, if you think I'll tell you where the express company gold is hid, you're crazy. You're not going to tell us. You're going to show us. What? You heard him. You're going to show us. We're starting out tonight. When the Northwest Mounted get here, you'll be gone, Charlie. Hey, I can't go anywhere. I'm too weak. You can lay on a sled the same as a cot. You can't force me to go. Oh, can't we? No, no I'll let go of my arm. You're going to show us no. that go to stand. All right, all right, let go. Then get up and get dressed. Oh. Make it fast. Uh, all right. Fast, I said, move. Yes, I am. You see, Charlie, it's snowing. We want to leave town before it starts, so there won't be any tracks to follow. The following morning, Sergeant Preston reached Grand Ledge and inquired the way to Charlie Breen's cabin. He saw the team out in front, unhitched King, who had been working in harness, and knocked on the door. There was no answer. The sergeant tried the door, opened it, and walked inside. Nobody here, King. There's a kitchen, though. Let's take a look out there. Oh, the stove's cold. Someone coming, boy? What? Uh, what's this? Dr. Norton. Oh, Sergeant, I saw you stop out in front and I came right over. But where's my patient? That's what I was going to ask you. No idea at all? No. That cot's been slept in. I can only think of one explanation. Fever, delirium. He may have wakened up during the night and dressed himself and wandered out. 
that's the case, I'm afraid we won't find him alive. Has he been delirious? Yes, but not recently. Not for the past two or three days. A fever, you understand, but still no delirium. Well, let's see if we can find him. No one in the town had seen Charlie. But the search took the doctor and the sergeant to Max Cannon. Who is this Mac? Just a drifter. I hired him to take care of Charlie for a few days when he was at his worst. Oh. He lives here with a couple of other ne'er-do-wells, Jake Larson and Curly Masters. No smoke coming from the stack, Doctor. Let's look around in back and see if there are any dogs. Both Jake and Curly had teams. No dogs here. Let's try to get inside the cabin. Locked. Maybe I can force it open. They're gone too, Doc. No supplies on the shelves, no blankets on the cots. I wonder. What? That letter you received, Sergeant. I wrote it. Charlie dictated it. Now, if I remember correctly, Mac was in the cabin at the time, out in the kitchen. Could Mac have persuaded Charlie not to turn the gold over to the police? Oh, no, that's impossible. Charlie is a sick man. The gold is weighing on his conscience. He only wants to get rid of it. These friends of Mac's, Curly and Jake, what sort of men are they? Curly is a bully. Jake's a tin horn gambler. Neither of them are any good. And we have to consider another possibility. They've gone after the gold, and they forced Charlie to go with them. It would be nothing but murder, Sergeant, to make Charlie leave his bed. Still, it seems like the logical conclusion to me. I'd better get after them. Can you help me, Doc? How? Oh. There was nothing in the letter about where the gold was hidden. Did Charlie tell you? No. Oh, too bad. He started to dictate the directions, but he was very weak. He became confused. He said it would be hard to find... He'd have to draw a map. I told him I'd send the letter. We'd build up his strength for a few days so he'd be in good shape to talk with you. Well, the robbery took place in 40 miles. It was somewhere near there that he hit the gold. Wait, wait a minute. Remember something? Crystal Creek. He mentioned Crystal Creek. Good enough. You know where it is? North of 40 Mile and close to the border. If Mike and the others do get the gold, I'll keep on to the north. Cross the border into Alaska. I'll try to catch them before they get to the cache. Come on, King. Jim Wilson and Harry Fields were two young men who had forsaken prospecting for trapping when winter gripped the Yukon. They had built their cabin in the forest north of 40 Mile. And as the pelts piled up, they congratulated themselves on their decision. There was only one thing that bothered them, and that was their lack of human companionship in the lonely north woods. That was why they immediately dropped their preparations for supper in the kitchen of their cabin when they heard dogs in the distance. Their own dogs immediately set up an answering chorus. Dogs? Yeah. Somebody heading north along the old game trail. Well, if he sees the light of our cabin, he'll stop. He won't see them in this storm. Come on. Well, well, what are you going to do? Get a lantern, light it, get over to the trail and stop him, whoever he is. Yeah, ask him to spend the night. Why, sure. Company, Jim. Come on. Hey! 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 Stop him! The two young men ran out of the cabin yelling at the top of their lungs. When Mac McLean heard them and saw Harry's lantern, he stopped the team. Hey, Jim, there's four of them. This will be a real party. Welcome, stranger. What are you guys talking about? What are you traveling for on a night like this? Come on, we'll put you out. Oh, thanks, boys. we got to keep moving. Uh, wait a minute, Jake. How's Charlie doing, Curly? Looks to me like he's passed out. One of your buddies sick? Hey, uh, yeah. Maybe we'd better stop with you for a little while. Just follow us. The cabin's in the clearing this way. All right, go ahead. Gee, gee there. Uh, march. March, Harry. Uh, march. I say we ought to keep going. We know the goal's at Crystal Creek. But Charlie's got to be alive when we get there to point it out for us. Now get him warm and feed him near last. Now march. March there. When the cabin was reached, Harry and Jim lifted Charlie from the sled and carried him inside. Mac followed them, leaving Jake and Curly to unharness and feed the dogs. Here, right away. Uh, this cut. Easy does it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's some blankets. Yeah. Uh, I'll cover him up. What, uh, what, what's the matter with him? Uh, he's just tired out. A little food, he'll be all right. Oh, then he isn't really sick. No, no. We'll have plenty of food for you in just a minute. Come on, Harry. Lend a hand. Uh, yeah, right. 
Uh, better cut off half a dozen more steaks from that caribou. What's the matter with you? Jim, that man we just carried in wasn't unconscious. Well, he sure was. No, he wasn't. When I was bending over him, he opened his eyes. Then when that other fella came up with the blankets, he closed them tight again. You mean he's playing possum? Yeah. Why, I don't know. I didn't say anything because of what I saw in his eyes. That man is scared to death. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a hit. There it goes into the right field stands. It's a homer. Oh, boy, kids, what fun it is at the ballpark. Come on out to the game. Come now as guest of your favorite team. It's your chance to get free baseball tickets. If you're 12 years old or younger, you can see a major or minor league baseball game free with a paying adult. To get your free ticket, here's all you do. Get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are right on the ticket. Don't lose a day. Hurry. For each free ticket, Ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Or get Quaker Paco 10, send the guarantee seal, and you'll receive two free baseball tickets. Write down this address quick before you forget. Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send right away. <laughs> Now to continue. Jim and Harry cooked caribou steaks for their guests and prepared some broth for Charlie. After they had eaten, Mac announced that he and his companions would like to turn in. Uh, you understand it. we got to be on our way as soon as it's light. Oh, of course. Uh, well, you and your friends can use this room. Jim and I will sleep out in the kitchen. There's only one cot left, but there's plenty of blankets. The floor won't be too cold close to the stove. Uh, we'll make our fire. Good. See you in the morning, then. Right. Good night. Good night. Suddenly, Harry woke up and sat bolt upright. The kitchen door was opening. Who's that? Quiet, quiet. Harry, it's all right, Jim. Keep your voice down. It's the old man. Yes, it's me. My name is Charlie Breed. I don't want to get you two in trouble, but I wish you'd do me a favor. What's that? As soon as we leave, drive into 40 Mile and find the mountain. Tell him the Express Company Gold is behind the waterfall at the head of Crystal Creek. The Express Company Gold? The gold that was stolen from the Express Company last summer. It's behind the waterfall. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. It will to the red coach. I've got to get back to my car. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who are those men with you? Who are you? They're crooks. So am I. They'll mind the question. Don't do anything until after we've left. And be quiet. What do you make of that? I didn't figure any of them were Sunday school teachers. Yeah, the old man could be out of his head, you know. He didn't sound like it to me. No, to me, Jim. What are we going to do about it? Do what the old man says. Crooks. Heading north. On their way to Crystal Creek, all right. And Express Company go. It's a job for the police. I didn't like the way that big boozer they called Curly treated the old man. I don't like any of them but the old man. I don't think he's really one of them. He said he was a crook. He also wants us to go to the police. I've got an idea. I'd better forget it. I could drive in the 40 mile and come back here with the money before morning. What's more, that's what I'm going to do. What if they wake up and find you gone? Tell them I've gone to the post for supplies, but I'll be back in time. Harry, if I... they're crooks, it's on duty to help capture them. Hold it for it, Jim. Harry slipped into his mucklucks and parka and left the cabin by the back door. He woke the members of his team one by one, ordering them to be quiet. He harnessed them to his sled and started to lead them out of the clearing when suddenly a wolf howled in the distance. Instantly, every dog around the cabin was wide awake and howling too. Harry jumped on the runners of his sled and urged his team forward. He looked back at the cabin. He saw two men run out the front door. 
just as he was disappearing among the trees, one of them opened fire. It felt as if someone had hit his shoulder with a sledgehammer. He clung to the jeep hole desperately. When the game trail was reached, he turned the team into the face of the storm, south toward 40 miles. It was two hours later. King was working in harness. The wind was at his back, and in spite of the drifted trail, he was setting a fast pace. He barked a warning to his master when he saw the team heading towards the boat. I, I need some help. I shot. There's some crooks in our cabinet. Oh. The sergeant caught Harry before he hit the ground. He placed him on his sled and covered him with a blanket. Then he went to work. He cut fur boughs, built a windbreak, lit a fire. When the fire was roaring, he eased Harry out of his pocket and his hunting shirt. He cleaned the bullet wound and bandaged it. As he finished, Harry opened his eyes. Yes, sir. Help me. Get the police. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted. No. Honest? You said there were crooks at your cabin. Yeah. They were heading north along this trail. We stopped them and offered them shelter for the night. There were three. Harry described the events of the evening, told the sergeant of Charlie's message and the shooting as he drove away from the cabin. There was nothing to do but go on. I've been following those men from Grand Ledge. Yeah? What's it all about? Charlie took part in a gold robbery last summer. He got away, but his partner was killed. He cashed the gold at Crystal Creek. You knew that already? Yes, he wrote us a letter. He wants to give himself and the gold up. Mac and the others have different ideas. They seem to. I wonder what they've done to Jim. How do you feel? Oh, fine. I can drive all right. You won't have to do that. You can ride my sled. Your team will follow mine. Sure. If they're heading home, they will. Let's go, King. Line the team, boy. <laughs> When the sergeant and Harry arrived at the cabin, they found it dark. As soon as they were inside, Harry lit a lamp. Yeah. Well, they've all gone. Jim's gone, too. We know where they're heading. But why should they take Jim with them? Look, there's a note on the table. Oh, they didn't take Jim with them. What does it say, sergeant? Jim's in the woods. It, That's all. In the woods? Why? What's the idea? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Does it mean he's dead? Give me something that belongs to him so King can get the scent. Uh, well, with that scarf over there. Here, okay. King. Good boy. Fine. Oh, oh, oh. This is an awful storm if they carry him. will do his best. Go on, boy. Find him. Oh, oh, oh. Sergeant and Harry plunged into the woods after King. The great dog moved swiftly at first, but only for a few minutes. There were no tracks. The wind-driven snow beat against their faces. King lost the scent time after time, and the men waited as he trotted back and forth. Finally, he stopped dead in his tracks, his nose lifted to the wind. He's lost it for good, Sergeant. I wonder. I think something else was bothering him. Those are wolves. Close. Maybe they've got Jim. King looked up into his master's face, asking for permission to head for the wolf pack. Their scent reached him only faithfully, and their howls told him they had found a prey, and the prey could be a man. Go on, boy, we'll follow you. Continue our adventure in just a moment. What are you doing about the future? Are you talking about it, thinking about it, or really doing something about it? The smart way, the right way to ensure your future is by investing regularly in United States savings bonds. In all the world, there's no safer, sure, better way to save. A part of everything you earn is yours to keep. And remember, a little set aside each week for savings bonds soon adds up to a lot. Before you know it, your savings have grown so that a bright future isn't too far away. 
What do you want? A home of your own? A trip to faraway places? An education for your children? Security in your old age? They're all possible, you know, if you start saving today for tomorrow. The payroll savings plan where you work or the bond-a-month plan where you bank can be the key to unlock the door of your future. The future you plan for wisely by investing in United States savings bonds. This message is brought to you as a public service. hand and foot was lying at the base of a great pine. The gray shapes were circling closer and closer. He shouted at them, kicked at them with his brown feet, but he knew that his strength was going. The leader of the pack leaped straight at him. Jim turned his back and yelled. But the wolf never hit him. Jim looked back. The animal closest to him wasn't a wolf, it was a dog. And the dog and the leader of the pack were locked in a death struggle. A film seemed to be closing over Jim's eyes. Suddenly, there were two men close to him, beaten off the pack with the butts of their guns. And the wolves faded away into the darkness. Jim heard voices. Good work, King. You saved his life, yeah, boy. He's alive, Sergeant. He's just passed. I'll carry him back to the cabin. Uh, hurry. That's all right, fella. This is Sergeant Preston with me. You're going to be all right now, oh, Jim. Took me out here, tied me up, left a note. I figured the police would have to waste a lot of time looking for me. Good thing. Good thing you got here so fast. It'll be a better thing when Mac and Jake and Curly are behind bars. <laughs> Jim was carried back to the cabin and put to bed. The sergeant hitched King in the lead position and started out for Crystal Creek. The storm continued all that night and through the next day. It was night again before the creek was reached. But in spite of the hard going, the sergeant knew that King's pace must have cut down the crook's lead considerably. There was a waterfall at the head of the creek, and as they approached it, the sergeant called on King to slacken his speed. Easy, boy, easy. Then he caught sight of a campfire through the darkness and the snow, and he stopped the team. Looking, hold on, hold on. King was released from the traces, and the sergeant and he started on alone. Come on. At last, they could see the camp. The cook's dogs began to bark, but there was only one man close to the fire, and he was lying on the ground. The sergeant hurried forward. King growled a warning, and the other dogs quieted down. It was Charlie who was lying on the ground. He moaned softly. The sergeant knelt beside him. Good. Sergeant Preston. Oh, good. You're Charlie Breen? Yes. Where are the others? There. The old man pointed to the cliff ahead. Where the waterfall had coursed in summer, there was now a solid sheet of ice. An opening had been chopped through the ice wall. Last summer, I found an opening in the cliff back of the waterfall just a few feet away. It leads back to a cave. That's where I hid the gold. There's only one entrance to the cave? Yeah. They've gone after the gold. I wasn't going to tell them where it was. Let them kill me. Make them hunt for it. Give you time to get here. But the pain. Curly. What's the matter with your arm? I guess it's broken. Curly doesn't know his own strength. Oh? You should get a chance to use it against someone his own size. I'll put a splint on that arm. The sergeant broke off the top of the G-pole on Mac's sled and used it as a splint. When it was securely bound, he called King. Come on, boy. You're going in there? I'm going to wait for them at the opening. You said give Curly a chance to use his strength. Yes. Oh, forget it. Use your gun. Shoot first. There's three of them. The passage leading to the cave is narrow. They'll have to come out one by one. Shoot first. Come on, King. The sergeant stepped through the hole that had been chopped in the ice wall and into the rocky passage that led to the cave. Farther back, he could hear voices. A few minutes later, he saw a lantern swaying back and forth, advancing toward him. Curly was carrying it. His bulk filled the narrow passage completely. 
The sergeant waited until a second before the light from the lantern would fall on him, and then he moved fast. Hold that man and hire, Curly. Sure, Mac. Just follow me. I'll take that. The sergeant jerked the lantern from Curly's hand and threw it outside the passageway. Then, with all his strength, he crashed his right to Curly's jaw, and the bruiser toppled to the ground. An instant later, the sergeant was outside the passageway and crouched beside the opening. What happened? Curly! Somebody hit him. Knocked him out. It couldn't have been Charlie. No, but that evens the score for what Curly did to him. From now on, I use my gun. Who are you? Northwest Mounted Police. You're under arrest. You don't have to be told this is the only exit. Come out of there with your hands up or I'll start shooting. There was a hurried consultation between Jake and Mac. And then... Don't shoot, we're coming. Make it fast. Mac and Jake stepped over Curly and walked out of the passage with their hands raised high. The sergeant took their gun. Now go back and get Curly. You'll have to make a second trip for the gold. We didn't steal that gold. You can't charge us with robbery. You're charged with illegal possession of stolen goods, with assault and battery, with forcible detention. Why? The jury may decide it was abduction. Charlie came with us willingly. He hired us to bring him here. Oh, that's a lie. And I'm going to live long enough to tell the judge the truth. You're going to live a long time, Charlie. And he'll go to jail with us. I doubt it after he's turned witness for the crown. I haven't finished with the charges against you. You shot Harry Fields, and you tried to kill his partner. We only tied him up. And left him to die. That's attempted murder. When the judge adds up your sentences, you'll be on your way to jail for 20 years, and this case will be closed. Oh, oh, oh. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Say, kids, picture yourself at the ball game right now. The bases are loaded with two out. The star hitter steps up and you see him in person. You get the thrill of seeing him hit that homer. Get in on the fun. Come out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. Yes, you can go free if you're 12 years old or younger and bring a paying adult like mom or dad. Here's how to get your free ticket. Get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or muffet shredded wheat. Tear off a box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. By getting Quaker Paco 10 and sending the guarantee seal, you get two free baseball tickets. See two games free. Details are on every ticket. Hurry, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice or Muppet Shredded Wheat or the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait. Send now. <laughs> And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, this is one of the most difficult assignments I've ever given you. King and I are always ready, sir. Ready to go to the North Pole? The North Pole? You may have to. You'll join the cut of Victoria at Herschel Island. From there, you'll travel north until you contact the steamer Polar Quest. Well, that's the ship that's carrying those explorers. Yes, Sergeant. And one of them, Kurt Helmuth, is a murderer. Your orders are to bring him back here. An assignment to the Arctic. A dangerous voyage through pack ice and stormy seas lies ahead for Sergeant Preston and King. While far to the north, aboard the Polar Quest, a madman driven by ambition lays his plans for wholesale murder. <laughs> These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you Monday through Friday by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat. <laughs> And Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs>
in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.